This video is sponsored by Into the AM. Welcome to The Painting Coach. Are you ready to plunge into the unforgiving darkness of the elite warriors of the Dark Angels? I am, of course, talking about the legendary Deathwing Terminators. Today, we'll crack the code on these hulking behemoths, taking them from plastic to fantastic on the tabletop, as I cover everything you need to get your Deathwing Assault team ready to take on the enemies of the Imperium. A huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending me these models ahead of time so I can create some content for you and get some reviews on the channel. Grab your brushes, let's get painting. Let's get the basics down properly then. So the first thing we've done is priming the model with Xandru dust, which is a nice yellow browny bone color. We're then going to take some wraith bone spray and spray this from above and about 45 degrees. We're going to focus on Belial as well as the Deathwing Knight and the Terminator in this video. And here you can see the sub assemblies. I've left Belial's arms off and I've left any hooded heads off as well, just to make it easier to paint. The first thing we need to do is base all of the green cloth. I'm going to do all of this exactly the same way, even though the finish might be a little different. I'm taking a 50-50 mix of Caliban green and AK black. Now you can use whatever black you want. And I'm going to use this to base all of the green areas. Again, being really careful not to spill this on the bone armor. So just take your time as you get closer to this part. Leaving that last color in the recesses, we're then going to take Caliban green and start to highlight all of the green rows. Now we are going to do this in a layer style, so it's going to take a little bit longer, but the effect is really worth it. I'm then going to take a 50-50 mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow, and I'm going to use this to continue highlighting the green cloth. Now when it comes to Belial, I'm not doing his cloak, just his Tarbad, and the same for the Deathwing Knight. I will start to see that punchy green colour really come out now. You may need to put a couple of coats on to get a nice solid colour, but that's okay. Try and focus it on the highest folds because this will ease that blend between the two colours quite nicely as well. When you finish with that, go for pure warpstone glow. And again, we're focusing on those areas that are going to catch the most light. Again, you're going to need more than one coat. Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and just work this over those creases and those really pronounced folds. While you're highlighting all that green, let me tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Into the AM. I absolutely love their clothes. They do a fantastic range of basics like this t-shirt, and it genuinely is one of the comfiest t-shirts I've ever owned. The fabric is so soft. Now, I was going to do one of those t-shirt transition videos, and then I thought, no, I'm 40. Um, you're probably more interested in the feel, the fit, and the look of the clothes than any kind of gimmick. The basics range covers a huge variety of different types of clothes like shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, and sweatshirts. And everything you see me wearing in this video is from the basics range. The cuts on the clothing and the fit is really great as well. Now, if your body type is anything like mine, which is goes to the gym, never says no to a donut, then you're in for a treat. You know, the, the clothes are the treat. There's no donuts in the video. The fabric on these clothes is really nice and soft as well. What's really great about it is even after you wash it a couple of times, it stays soft and it keeps its shape, which means these clothes are going to last you a long time. I really do love wearing Into the AM clothing, and I would love for you to try it out as well. Use my link in the description of this video to get a 10% off coupon site-wide so you can get whatever you want and give it a go. So go on, click that link and get yourself something nice. Oh, totally forgot. They've also got a fantastic line of graphic t-shirts. They update these designs frequently, so there's always something really great to choose from. So make sure you go and check that out. Let's get back to the video. The final highlight on the sharpest folds is going to be with a 50-50 mix of Warpstone Glow and Moot Green. So mix this nicely on your palette. Again, make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. And you're just going to draw this along the sharpest folds of the clothing. So you've got a nice tight line and this should help it stand out really nicely. If you followed along with this so far, you should have some really nice looking green cloth and tart bads now. Next up, we're going to base the inside of Belial's cloak, and we're also going to paint all of the purpley pink beading and bits of rope and cord that are on the models. So the color we're using for this is a 50-50 mix of Screamer Pink and Black. Now, the reason I'm painting it like this is because it gives me more control over the layering up side of things. I don't have to worry about throwing null oil into any of the recesses. It's just a little bit more control. It does take longer, but the effect is much better. 
We'll then take pure Scream of Pink and start to highlight the inside of the cloak as well as all of the little bits of rope and cord that we've got on all of our Deathwing models. Now, you want to look for nice wide areas when it comes to the cloak. We're not edge highlighting here, we're area highlighting. Once you're happy with that, we're then going to move on to Pink Horror. And we're going to use the Pink Horror to just start that edge highlighting, catching the sharpest folds of the cloak. And this is going to be quite a stark contrast with the build-up that we've done so far. But that's okay, because we really want to start to make these elements pop a little bit now. We'll finish this by adding a little bit of Emperor's Children. Now, this is a much brighter pink colour. And we're just going to dot this along the top of the cord and any leather handles or straps or purity seals that you may have painted on the model. For the back of Belial's cloak, we're going to use Incubi Darkness. Now, this is a bluey green colour. And we're going to focus this over the majority of the cloak. We're just going to make sure that we have the darker, dark green colour in the recesses. This might need two coats to cover properly, but again, that's going to help the layer transition as we work over the cloak. To highlight this, I'm going to take a 50-50 mix of Cyberite Green and Incubi Darkness. Now again, this is a very bluey green colour, but we're focusing on those raised folds. There's quite a lot of texture on Belial's cloak from the folds and the shoulder pad indentations. So this should be a nice way of getting some really, really crisp highlights. The final highlight we'll use on the cloak, and we're going to use this fairly sparingly, and making sure we've got a very good tip on the brush, is with Cyberite Green on its own. So this is bringing that cloak back towards the green colour, but it's going to really help it stand out against the green tar bads that we've got on Belial and the other Deathwing models. Moving on to some of the armour parts next then, we're going to paint all of the black ribbing of the armour joints, and the colour we're going to use this is Black Templar Contrast Paint, now be very careful with this when you come to those parts of armour that you want to stay bone. It's not the end of the world if you do make a mistake, but obviously the less mistakes we make, the easier it is to clean up. And because this is going over a light colour, it's going to give you a really nice uh, highlight without having to go back in over it. We'll do the brown leather next, and the colour we're going to start this off with is Rhinox Hide, which is a nice ready brown colour. So just take your time with this. Be very careful about getting on bits you may have already finished. And you can also selectively use this for some of the wrappings around some of the handles of the weapons as well. When that's dry, we'll paint the majority of the leather areas with Doomball Brown, which is just continuing that lighter, ready brown effect that we've got so far. I'm not worrying too much about doing any deep shading on this because the Rhinox hide is going to do that for us. We just want to make sure that the Doomball Brown covers the main body. Finally, we'll highlight all of the leather using Scrag Brown, which is a nice orangey brown colour. It's very bright and can be quite stark. So we want to use it fairly sparingly and keep it on those edge highlights. When it comes to the nice big leather straps such as we've got on the Storm Bolt here, we can use a little bit of a stippling motion and some sharp scratches just to add more texture into that leather. Moving on to the gold, we're going to take some Dragon's Gold from two thin coats. Now, if you haven't got this, Retributor armor will work perfectly fine. The key here is just making sure that we cover all of the bits that are going to be gold, being really, really careful around areas that we don't want to be gold, in particular that armor, because again, it's just going to be a little bit more difficult to get it fixed if we do make any mistakes. We'll wash all of the gold with Reichland Flesh Shade. Now this will really start to bring out the depth of the sculpt on the model, so it's a really nice stage. Again, take your time and be careful around any bone bits of armour. Now I am making out that it might be an absolute nightmare to clean up. It's not because we've got the colours we need to make it work really nice and easily. It just saves on that cleanup time if you take your time now. To highlight the gold, we're going to use glistening gold, again from two thin coats, but if you haven't got this, Liberator Gold is absolutely fine. All we're looking to do here is catch the bits of gold that are going to get the most light. So generally it's going to be part of the model, the face upwards. So we can do quite a bit of edge highlighting here using the shape of the model and the tip of the brush. And that'll give us a really nice bright glistening gold colour. Now for me, this takes the gold highlight enough. If you want to go a little bit further, you can use some white gold or mix some bright silver into this mix just to give it a little bit of an extra sharpness. But for me, 
this is bright enough. We're going to base the next three colors because we're going to wash them all at the same time. So the first thing we're going to do is paint all of the silver metallics. And the color I use of this is Surcoat Silver from Two Thin Coats. If you haven't got this, you can use Lead Belcher. That'll work absolutely fine. Again, take your time working around areas, particularly where the armor is concerned. And there's lots of metallic studs on the armor as well. So you will just have to be very careful not to spill it onto those areas. Next up, we'll take Mephiston Red and we'll use this to paint all of the red elements. So we're looking at things like all of the Deathwind iconography as well as the weapon casing. So again, make sure you thin this down a little bit because it covers fantastically well. And you, if you've got thick dry paint on your brush, you can be dragging it. You'll end up putting it in places you don't want it. Finally, we'll base all of the stone elements such as the Crux Terminatus. And we're going to use Dawnstone for this. Now, I find I need two coats of Dawnstone for it to work well. So again, it's worth just thinning it down, taking your time and getting a nice even coverage because we don't want this to look lumpy. These are some of the premium elements on the model. We will then darken all of these down. Of course, the colour we use that is Null and Oil, which is a very nice black wash. Take your time to make sure you don't spill this on the bone armour. But otherwise, we're just going to cover all of those three areas with the null oil and you'll start to see it really brings up the texture and the design of the model with this step. When that null oil is completely dry, we will go back in and start highlighting. We'll do all of the red first and the color we're gonna use for this is Evil Sun Scarlet. So this is a fairly easy and straightforward way of highlighting we're just gonna make sure we haven't got too much on our brush and a good tip and we're gonna drag it along all those straight edges where we don't have a straight edge we're just gonna very carefully draw that highlight in so for example on the Deathwind iconography we're just gonna focus on the bottom part of the wings that are gonna catch the most light the final highlight we'll do on the red is with Luganath orange and this is a very bright orange color which means we're gonna use it very very sparingly we're just going to focus dotting this on the sharpest edges of the red element. So, for example, on the corners of the bolter casing and on the really bottom sharp exposed areas of some of the death iconography as well. It's better to put a little on and put more on than put too much on and then have to go back and correct. Next up, we'll highlight the stone areas and the colour we can use for that is Administratum Grey. Now, this is a much lighter grey colour than the Dawnstone we used previously, but that's okay. The key thing here is to make sure we take our time. We've got a really good tip on our brush. Now, I've probably got too much paint on my brush here, so the control can be a bit of a challenge. So you probably want less paint than I've got here. And we're just looking to drag it where we can along those sharp edges. Where we can't drag it, we're just carefully adding it, leaving the darker colours in the recesses. The final highlight we'll do on all of the stone is going to be with grey sear. Now this is a really light grey colour but it's very nice for doing a final highlight on grey and stone elements. So we're just going to work our way around and make sure that we catch the sharpest edges that are going to catch the most light. Again, leaving those darker colours in the recesses. To highlight all of the silver I'm going to use my old faithful Chrome Vallejo Model Air. Now if you haven't got this you can use something like Stormhost Silver if that's what you've got from Citadel. Absolutely no problem. I just prefer this because of the consistency and the coverage. And what I'm looking to do is drag this along those edges, get nice, crisp, sharp highlights. And when it comes to larger areas, I'm just going to focus on the bits that face upwards because they're going to catch the most light and they're going to be the, the shiniest bits. We're going to shade all of the armor next, and if you need to, go back with some Wraithbone and repair any mistakes you may have made. Now, I'm using a 50-50 mix of Speed Paint Medium and Bony Matter Speed Paint from the Army Painter. If you haven't got this, you could use something like maybe Skeleton Horde, which is probably a little bit warmer. What I'm using is a lot colder, and I've actually made a little dropper bottle up of the mix, because I'm going to be using a lot of it across all of the Deathwing that come in the Deathwing Assault box. So I want to make sure that my mixes are consistent. In terms of applying this, you can apply it all over the bone armour and it'll flow into those recesses really nicely. Keep an eye on it that it doesn't pool and you're just going to have to keep moving it because if it starts to dry, it can be a challenge to repair any mistakes. However, it's really nice for actually blending up as well. So if you think of an area that you want to be dark, 
you can just apply this in a stippling motion or in a nice glazing motion using the belly of your brush. Clean your brush off and you can then feather it into the colours above it really nicely. So it is a fantastic way of doing this shading. Now, work your way around all of your Deathwing models doing this. And I'd probably recommend doing one at a time to make sure that it doesn't dry and doesn't leave you with some pooling where you don't want it. But generally, this will flow into the recesses really, really nicely. When that's completely dry, we'll move on to some of the other elements. So the Imperialis on the Deathwing are green, so we can do that quite easily. The first thing we need to do is take some white paint. Now I use bold titanium white from Procryl. You can use whatever white you prefer. And I'm going to drag this along the raised areas of the Imperialis and any other green elements. So for example, the Terminator Sergeant has got a Dark Angel symbol on his helmet. I'm also going to paint any lenses with this at this point as well, because this is going to just be a nice base for the next steps. I'm then going to take some Warp Lightning Contrast Paint and paint this over all those areas I want to be green. And you can see straight away you get a really nice bright green without any effort at all. This is because it's going to flow into those recesses to give you the shadow. And because it's going over a little bit of a transition with the white and the bone, you're going to get a nice bright highlight as well. For painting things like feathers, I'm going to use Black Templar Contrast Paint again. And the reason I'm using this is because you get a really nice, effective result without too much effort. You can, of course, go back in and highlight the feathers if you want, but any earthy colour is going to work here. You can use something like Wildwood if you wanted them to be brown, or maybe even Dark Angels Green if you wanted dark green feathers as well. For any white elements, such as some of the wing iconography on Belial, I'm going to base all this using Bold Titanium White. Now this should go on fairly easily because it's going over a light undercoat, so one coat should be fine. I'm then going to take some Apothecary White Contrast Paint and paint this all over the wing areas. Again, this should flow nicely into the recesses, giving you some nice definition. Finally, when that's totally dry, we'll highlight all of the wing elements using Bold Titanium White. Again, just focusing on the sharp edges as it'll give us a nice colour transition. I'm then going to paint all of the gems and lenses. So for the gems on Belial, they're a dark red, so I'm going to use Flesh Terrors Red Contrast Paint. Now, if I need to add a little bit more once it's dry, just to deepen that colour a bit, then that's an easy thing to do, and I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you do that. For the eye lenses on the Terminators, I'm using Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint, and I'm painting this over the lens, and then cleaning my brush off, and then I'm wiping away towards the center, and this is going to give me a really easy fake glow effect. With all that done, let's highlight the armor. So we're going to do two steps for this. The first step is going to be with Wraith Bone, and this is basically just edge highlighting all of the armor. So work your way around, pick those bits you want to be a little bit brighter, and just drag your brush along with the shape of the model. This is really easy and straightforward, so you don't have to think about it too much. If you're not sure how to do a certain element, then just have a little look at the models at the end so you can see how I've done it, or just check the heavy metal style on the box art. It's important to say at this stage as well, there will be elements of the models that I'm not going to show on this video, such as painting the flames and painting the faces. I've done videos on that previously, so I'm going to leave links to those in the description. So make sure you check those out to see how I do some of the other elements. The final highlight on the armor is going to be with white. And this is going to be in those sharpest areas where you notice you put in the Wraithbone highlight on, but you can't actually see it because the color's already Wraithbone. So we're just going to take some white. I'm using, again, bold titanium white to get this nice sharp highlight. The final thing I'll show you how to do on the video are the power notes of the power sword. So the first thing we're going to do is take some Stegadon scale green and then water it down quite a bit. And make sure we haven't got too much on our brush. I'm going to paint this over the power nodes and again down the side of the power nodes as well, making sure that we can still see a little bit of the metallic colour showing through. We'll then take some Temple Guard Blue and we'll use this to highlight the power nodes and also the connecting cable from the power node to the actual power generator. And we'll add a final highlight of Baharoth Blue, which is a nice bright blue, again on the power nose and just on a little pit of that connecting cable and the final thing we'll do is just add a little dot of white at the top of the power node. Yeah. 
So there we have it. I've revealed all of the secrets that you need to paint your Dark Angels Deathwing Terminators. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and don't forget to check out Into the AM by clicking the link in the description. Now that you've painted your Deathwing Terminators, I'm sure that you want to paint the big man himself, Lion L. Johnson. So check out this video here. I'll see you next time.